This is Mayor Jane Castor. On behalf of our great city of Tampa, I wish you safe and happy travels. May your journey always lead you back to the Tampa Bay region. What time is it? It's currently 6.03 in the morning and I'm sitting here at the airport. We're literally gonna try something new considering that I don't vlog in public, let alone vlog in general. So I'm going somewhere in a corner where I'm not as cringe. But anyway. What is up guys? Striking to me back here with another video. Today I'm bringing you on for a very different video than what I've ever done, quite honestly. Of a quite literally a travel vlog. Um, I'm currently sitting in the airport here in Tampa as we, as in my team, is traveling up to Rhode Island, so back home for me, if you didn't know, to go play in the third seating event of the US uh, NSL season. And this is kind of really big because for a, a huge amount of us, probably 90% of us, 95%, whatever, I've never genuinely traveled for an airsoft event like outside of like a home field. And now we're traveling to a different part of the country to go play in a quite massive uh, tournament. Um, if you don't know what NSL is, uh, I would definitely go look it up. I'll link it down below. Essentially, it's this new twist or spin on what SpeedQB kind of used to be, I guess, where SpeedQB is a lot more, SpeedQB is a lot more gamey, if you will, in terms of the rules, and it's obviously a lot more campy, if you don't know. Um, whereas NSL is a lot more sport-like because you have like an offense and defense perspective. You really need to play for a set of points in terms of scoring and there's a clock that you need to manage. Like it's a lot more, there's a, it's a lot more intricate. There's a lot more moving parts so that your skill ceiling is, is incredibly high compared to SpeedQB or CSO or some, any of the other like leagues that you have. So anyway, that's what we're doing. So we're traveling up to Rhode Island. We just played in an event literally three weeks ago in Tampa and we placed third, which was huge, considering that we had never played an NSL event before, ever. And we placed third in our first ever event, which leads us to being now nationally ranked fifth in the country, which is huge. Like that, that is, you know, to say that I'm now playing for the fifth best team in the country is really kind of strange. And now we're going to go to Rhode Island and compete against some, some of the same teams that we played down in in uh, Tampa which is kind of the theme that you'll see throughout this kind of sport or this this specific league and really what sets it apart from everybody else is that you've got some really dedicated teams that are here to travel like us um, elite in Tennessee who shout out to them who won the last both to the two events that are in the United States they won Indiana and then they won our event um, they're traveling up to Rhode Island. Like you've got some really big teams that are traveling all over the country to compete in these, and that's really what is now setting this this type of format apart, if you will, is that you're having teams that are traveling to these events. They're hosted all over the country, and if you get good enough and you end up winning or you know placing at your national championship, which is in June, you're going to go international and go play against the big boys over in Europe, which is kind of really crazy to think about. Um, but yeah, so here, I'm just, I'm at the airport. We have a really early flight. And we gotta go to Atlanta, and then we gotta go to Providence. So I'll be back home, which is really, really nice. It's kind of weird con con considering that after college, or when I moved down here for college, you know, any sort of competitive, like Speedsoft in general, didn't exist back home. Like it just, it didn't exist. And then it all of a sudden just kind of blew up. And now I'm going back home which I was, I moved away from Rhode Island, one for school and also because there was more of a scene down here in Florida. And now it's back, like it's, now there's actually a scene. So I'm going back there, it, it, it's just weird. But yeah, I'm excited, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna see where it goes. Oh, Best part about it being 7.30 in the morning is I need food and I never realized how fucking red I am, considering I was out in the sun all day yesterday and I burn all the Panda Express. I burn like crazy, so I'm so bad. Alrighty. 
and away we go. We have an hour connection in one of the busiest airports in the world, and they're gonna trust. We're gonna trust that they're not gonna lose our bags on the way. I really need to knock on some wood after that. <laughs> All right, well, we're in Atlanta finally. I didn't really have time to film while on the plane, considering I had a middle seat, which probably isn't the worst thing considering how small I am. But anyway, yeah, I'm just waiting on the jetway for Andrew. Why is it saying it's 36 degrees out here? There's no way it's 36 degrees here in Ohio. Yeah, I'm just, I'm waiting for Andrew to get off the plane. And then we have to book it over to our next flight. Because it only leaves, it leaves in like an hour. And thankfully it's only the next terminal over, so it's not a long, no walker. I honestly am just learning to get over the fear of fuck what people think. If I'm that weird dude that's vlogging in public, fuck you. I, I, just, I don't care. Mission accomplished. This is just weird for me. I was explaining that to you. I, I've never had to like come here and it not be something that's family related. Like of all things to think that I come back to where I like not really, well I guess I could say grew up. Because I, I spent the last 11, 12 years of my life here in Rhode Island. To come back here to play airsoft. So yeah, we're now on the way to go grab the rental car or the, the van. What would you call it? The Mormon Dad van? Yeah, the Mormon Dad van. The Mormon Dad van. We got a 12, like what was it a Ford Transit or a Sprinter? Uh, it's a big ass van. It's a big van that holds 12 people, a ferry, the, the team around. As I said earlier, we came up here early get all the shipping stuff that we needed done like picked up and then get everyone sorted before the rest of the team shows up tomorrow afternoon which that's gonna be I feel like that I, I don't know why I just have this bad feeling it's gonna be a nightmare like now I'm not trying to jinx anything however they're flying out of Orlando direct oh, to the province is the Orlando listen to us and show up early tomorrow. Yeah, their flight, I tried to do my best when I was scheduling everything, and what I realized was trying to get a flight to Rhode Island, of all places, does not work. Like, no one wants to come here, which I don't blame them. Um, so trying to get a flight up here in the off season was really, really hard. And so out of Tampa, it, just, it didn't exist. So I had them fly out of Orlando, which isn't bad, however, it's a 9 a.m. flight in Orlando is a crazy ass airport and we're like an hour and a half from Orlando, no traffic from the airport. So it meant that for a 9 a.m. flight, the guys need to be at the airport probably around 5, 6 a.m. And then with a two hour car ride, that means they're leaving at like three in the morning to then get to Rhode Island by noon, 1 p.m., whatever. Like, it's going to be a long day. And then they get off a plane, go to the Friday scrim practices that NSL holds at the field so we get an idea of the layout, all that great stuff. And then they play a tournament that whole weekend. And with the layout now being only eight teams, we play everybody. So we have, we've got, we're going to play guaranteed eight games in two days. And what we learned from Tampa is that is a lot. That turns to be a lot. It. What would you think of it, Andrew? I mean, I know you, you didn't play all of the games, but what was your like opinions on playing eight games in two days? It takes its toll pretty quick. Um, you know, having enough guys, being able to rotate and have subs is important. I mean, just watching those guys at Elite and how tired Pops was at the end of the, end of the weekend. I mean, it really just shows you've got to be fit to play. That's true, yeah. People don't realize that is, like, again, I was saying that earlier, the difference between, like, speed QB, CSL, and then to, like, NSL, 
is NSO is a sport. Like conditioning is huge because of how quickly you might be rotating on and off the field. The pace of the game, it's not slow like Speed QB was where you can sit in the back, you pick people off, go grab a flag and run it to the wall. You're running the flag to the wall with maybe three guys still up and you gotta be fast because you only have a certain amount of time for the game then is out. So you have to be quick. And so people just don't realize that. The new teams that are gonna be here in Rhode Island are gonna realize and learn. Are gonna learn that fairly quickly, I would assume, is that the pace of the game is something unlike anything else. And there is our car. This one looks a lot more presentable and a lot less creepy than, you know, that one. But hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, we're gonna fit 12 in here, is that what it is? Oh yeah, there's plenty of room. Alright. This is my dog's gonna lose their mind. Hello. Hi. Oh, good lord. Luke, how you feeling? It's good, man. I'm hungry. We had extreme. About to check out the field, see what's going on, do a little strategizing, and then after that, we're gonna hit some grub. I'm starving like a motherfucker. Ooh. Yeah, they got a big ass thing. All right, day two. We're back. And we're sitting actually now out at the field. I picked up the boys. Luke's here, finally here. You said you're hungry, right? Regular sandwich. Trick boy sandwich Hold you want. for right now. Okay. <laughs> Luke, what do you think? I fuck with it. I like it. No. I didn't look this good back. Yo, they're playing all the way over there. That wall is open. Oh, I was just about to say. These green the lines are not in play. Man, you can, if you want to jump in stuff, it's fine. Just look at the camera. One is more than one of wall as much as possible. Okay. This is, this is it. This is how, that's how you play it. I just found out how you play it. Get in, you can't stand up. Get on the floor, can't get shot up the top, can't get shot from the snake. You have to be on the floor, you have to peek on the outside. As soon as you peek on the outside, you can see the uh, Aztec. And you can see a little bit of the nose. You can also see home if you do peek up just a little bit, but I'm not gonna lie to you. It just all depends on the pressure you get from the other corner if that barrier is being played at all. It's going to be interesting. I'm not going to lie to you. How are you doing? Good. Hello. Had, had a good... Had a good flight? You did? Yeah. How are you doing? I'm good. Hey, Luke. How are you? Good? Good. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are we here. Oh, yeah. We're, we're here, so... Wow. This is cool, eh? This is great. Blown away. Oh, yeah. Blown away. Great. But... Looking forward to it? Yeah. We don't mind being on. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. What are the thoughts? Oh my god. <laughs> There's no way. How are you finna play this, Logan? I have no idea. It's so tight. You gotta see this. You're gonna be happy. Look at the barrier changes first off. Look at my Vegas. Look at the fucking ass thing. Look at the Vegas. Yeah, I know it's actually in those, it's actually playable now. Take this. Take your head, man. Take your head. Not yet. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the speed field? It needs to be polished, but it's great. Yeah. It looks phenomenal. I mean, this carpet's amazing. Like, if you go through that when you're dead, second degree. No, administrative. Administrative penalty. Nobody will have to serve in the dead box, but we'll have to start a man down. Not go through there. Come out through there. Once you get shot, go over there. The penalty box is right on the other side. So the inside right? Yeah. Where is it? So, so where's the penalty box? Okay. Huh? You want to do this with everybody? Obey! Come up Maybe. here real quick. It's important. Hey, say, say. Toss on the field. Toss on the field. Man, this field is huge, baby. This is awesome. I can't right even here. wait, Steve, man. Baby. I can't wait. 
Pro you Shop's amazing. Look at how big Ready. Ready. You hyped for this weekend? Pro Shop's amazing. Everything's looking real good. Real good. They did a great fucking job here, man. Great job. Word. Say something for the vlog. Uh, hello, vlog. I don't know, bro. I'll vlog. This is Jason with a list. Jason with a list. That's a shout out on Instagram. But honestly, overall thoughts, this field has obviously changed a lot since I played back in December, which I would expect considering that there's now a whole new, it's a whole new layout, whole new format. But even just the structural design of, you know, the breakout boxes, that was one of the big concerns I was telling all my guys this past weekend was the, the, or the orange, my lord, the green lines used to be the former out of bounds lines. Whereas in Tampa, we have a hockey arena style like what they have here. They now have extended the field of play so it's all the way out to this width. So now this wall is in play, which is really, really nice. And it kind of takes away a lot of our concerns that we had about, oh, we need to be careful, like it's out of play, like don't go across that line. But now we know, you know, we're in good shape in terms of, you know, they've got all the zones marked out. We just went over and did, you know, the dead boxes in terms of where we need to stand, where the penalty boxes are, the breakout walls. And we're the, we're the only team that's out here right now, so we don't really need to be quiet about what we're saying. But you can see how, Mason, you see how these pillars are be a problem, problem if you're not careful. Yeah, but this, this side is the better side. You were wrong. About what? Um, how Snake was gonna have to be in control of the time. The, the things yeah, are now we, this way instead of went, this way. We already went that That's way. Awesome. Ask me for anyone, anyone. So now anyone can look forward and yeah. see. Two minutes. It's a matter of just someone's got to make that call. Hang on one second. I'm being summoned. <laughs> yeah, here comes the fun part. Bro, they broke my fucking tank, bro. That ass? This is why I want to drive this Check and see if any of your tanks are damaged. Sparky's tank is chipped. So, we have a small problem. We got all of our stuff unpacked, all of our boxes and whatnot, and from what we had shipped. What's up? You want to be in the vlog? You just want to get away from everything? Uh, and it turns out that some of our tanks have been broken. Some of what? Sparky's gun barrel nut is broken. It's like been a disaster. So we now have to go over to the field to have things repaired with less than 24 hours before we play. And a lot of that can't even be repaired, bro. Yeah, some of this stuff is just beyond repair at this point. You know, t tanks are chipped, so those are completely done. Because, down three, four times. Yeah, something like that. Like, yeah, four. I think it was like, I think it's four, maybe five, because Mason's tank is usable. Dom's got damaged. Sparky's is done. Andrews is chipped, but I think it's usable. And I think that's maybe, yeah, I think that's it. That's just four. But yeah, a lot of us are just very, very upset right now and understandably so. Respawn, respawn. There are five minutes remaining. Okay. She's registering. I gotta charge my trade. Can I charge this? What kind of trade do you have? Uh, Rider seat. Take a tight seat on this? What is that? Cry sack. <laughs> oh, that went right off the head. Zion, you actually, with your hoodie, you actually are like so dark, you don't even show up on camera. That's fucked up. Hey, that's character, bro. Damn. That's fucked up. You go for that? I know you're not talking to Casper. Oh. Remember when they did me dirty and they bro? No. You did just bro. Dirty, bro. Oh my god, my mom like commented, why does Luke look so white? Is that lighting? I am, man. You, bro, you were like. 
glowing and not in a good way. Oh, we got the ISO working. Yes, see. Back right! <laughs> Back right! X, X! Oh my god, flash him! Snake her out! Bro, before we leave, what is like a 10 second summary of today so far? Go. Chaos, bro. Hold on, bro. Let me. Is tell your name it. Anthony? Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, what are you doing? 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 Oh my God! All right, ten seconds. Why would you right get here? In the car? Bro, he's in the middle. Right, anyway, so look, I get to the, the first gate, right? Oh! Anyway, I saw a dog fight in the airport on some Michael Vick shit. We have. If you decide to jump off of a bridge, please invite me. I will be happily joining. Twelve people in the car. Miners, weapons. We got this. Justin Bieber in this bitch. Bro, we got. gotta say, it's a low sus. Anthony has both the miners with him up there. That's all I gotta say. It's the smallest, and they can fit up here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Shut up. Gonna get my lip, man. We should have changed his jersey name to Green Giant. <laughs> Damn, motherfucker, why don't you take out more rain? Hey, last thing. Bro, hey, yeah. okay. um, I'm in here the best I can we got, we got four people, right? Okay. Fives is our fifth. Um, That's crazy. He's playing with us. Okay, That's fire. So five's your fifth. Yeah. Here's the deal. Just don't do, what I, do what I did. What did I told you to do? Just yeah. No illegal oh, activities. Okay, bro. All right, so as I'm obviously watching this back, that's kind of where my footage ended in terms of what I had filmed, I wasn't able to film during the actual tournament day itself because they don't allow cameras and they couldn't have cameras on the sidelines. So I'm just going to kind of pick up where it left off and just kind of explain what happened from there. That was the end of the Friday night. We went into the tournament Saturday, went into groups, and ended up finishing groups four and three, which seated us fourth in our bracket. For the knockouts, we won our quarterfinals game and then lost to East Coast Energy and Nailbiter in semifinals. Went down to the third place game to play Murder Inc. and we ended up losing. We came up short, which is really unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of trying to wrap up a little bit of the vlog. I'm going to try and do more vlogs in the future just because I do enjoy doing them. It just requires a little bit more planning than I had expected. But either way, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, with that, it's not going to be the only time we're going to go up to Rhode Island. We just got our invitation to NSL Nationals, which is back in Rhode Island come June. So with that coming up and knowing a little bit more in advance, I will have that one planned out to try and do a little bit more of an entertaining vlog of the full weekend trip, adventure, whatever you want to call it. But anyway... That's going to do it for the vlog. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.